This lesson will give instruction on naming inorganic compounds. Naming compounds is referred to as nomenclature. I have divided the most common compounds into four distinct categories. A binary compound is a compound made of just two different elements. If a binary compound contains a metal and a nonmetal, I will refer to it as a type 1. The steps for naming a type 1 compound is to simply name the metal, which will always come first, then name the non-metal, changing the ending to ide, I-D-E. Here are a few examples. The first example contains just two elements, thus it is a binary compound. Since sodium is a metal and chlorine is a non-metal, it belongs to the type 1 category. Its name is sodium chloride. The second example is named barium oxide. We drop the Y-G-E-N from oxygen and change the ending to ide. The last example, CAF2, has a subscript in the formula. You may recall from the previous chapter that calcium requires two fluorines to accept its valence electrons. But for naming purposes, the subscript is irrelevant in this case. It is still a binary compound composed of two different elements. Its name is calcium fluoride. Inorganic compounds that contain more than two elements will contain one of our polyatomic ions. I have called this category of compound type 2 and have nicknamed it bigger than binary since it will contain more than two different elements. You can refer to your polyatomic ion sheet for the names of these ions, but eventually you will need to memorize them. The rules for type 2 compounds are quite simple. You will name the metal, which again will come first, then name the polyatomic ion. There are no ending changes with this type of compound. Here are a few examples. If you notice, each one contains more than two elements. The first compound is composed of barium and the sulfate ion. Thus, its name is barium sulfate. The second example is named lithium phosphate. The last example is named sodium hydroxide. There is one important exception with type 2 compounds. This applies to compounds that contain the ammonium ion. Since ammonium is the only common polyatomic ion that has a positive charge, it will come first in the compound. It can bond to a non-metallic element, or it can bond to another polyatomic ion. In this example, ammonium is bonding to a chlorine atom. In this case, we will revert to changing the ending to ide. The name of this compound is ammonium chloride. In the next example, ammonium is bonded to another polyatomic ion. In this case, the name is ammonium acetate with no ending change. Type 1 and type 2 compounds comprise roughly 85% of the compounds that we will name. The remaining 15% or so are divided into type 3 and type 4. Type 3 compounds are binary compounds that contain only nonmetals. Since there are not many nonmetallic elements, there are not many type 3 compounds that we will encounter. Type 3 compounds use a series of prefixes in the compound's name. These prefixes are mono for 1, di for 2, tri for 3, tetra for 4, penta for 5, hexa for 6, hepta for 7, octa for 8, nana for 9, and deca for 10. The guidelines for naming a type 3 compound is to name the first element. You do not use a prefix unless the first element has a subscript indicating more than one atom. Then you name the second element, always using a prefix for the second element. Change the ending to ide. Here are some examples. Each of these compounds are classified as a type 3 because they contain two different nonmetals. The name of the first example is carbon dioxide. 
I do not use a prefix with the first element since it does not have a subscript. Remember to always use a prefix with the second element. The second compound is named phosphorus trichloride. The third example is diphosphorus pentoxide. Notice the use of a prefix with the first element in this example. Also, notice that we drop the A in penta since oxygen starts with the vowel. The last example is named carbon tetrachloride. Please remember to limit the use of prefixes to binary compounds containing all nonmetals, which again is rare. The final category of compounds that we will name are acids. Acids are easy to identify. They begin with a hydrogen atom. There is a rather complicated system for naming acids. The acid name depends on the anion bonded to the hydrogen. Binary acids are at the top of the chart. You add the prefix hydro and change the ending to ic. The root of the anion remains the same. This example is hydrochloric acid. The rest of the chart is devoted to acids containing a polyatomic ion. If the polyatomic ion has a prefix, keep the prefix. Change eight endings to ic and eight endings to us. If you are a student in my general chemistry class, instead of learning the rules for naming acids, you may simply memorize the names of these five common acids.